Over a year ago, I made a custom shift knob on a CNC machine and had a whole bunch of other really cool projects planned until breaking news tonight the coronavirus to contain the coronavirus due to the coronavirus the coronavirus the problem is overbuying what the fuck people does it kill you from giving you the shits but after a year of not being able to put my skills to work i decided that if i can't go to the cnc machine i should bring that cnc machine to me Before we move forward, I should start by answering the number one question this video was going to get. What is a CNC machine? By definition, a CNC machine is a machine that uses computer numerical control. And that definition's a bit useless, so let's break it down a little further. For example, if the machine believes the center point of the cutter has the current position X0, Y0, then telling the machine G01, F60, X10 is telling the machine to move in a straight line, G01, at a feed rate or speed of 60 inches per minute, F60, 10 inches to the right, X10. By stringing these lines together, you can tell the machine where to go and how to get there. So it's at this stage that most people go, ah, I, I get it. So a CNC is just like a 3D printer, right? <laughs> yes and no, more, more no. Yes, a 3D printer and a CNC milling machine are the same in the sense that they run and function on the same principle. However, the term CNC is generally reserved for a CNC that is cutting either mill or lathe and unlike additive manufacturing of FDM or SLA printers, the ramifications for failure to do things correct on a CNC are not only way more expensive, but they can also be flat out dangerous. The worst someone might see on an FDM 3D printer is something doesn't adhere. Maybe a really extreme case, a cheap one catches fire, but virtually never will everything in a 100 foot radius be at risk of being impaled through the walls. So now that we know what a CNC is, why would you need an enclosure, Austin? I've seen 3D printers before. In fact, we had one at my school and it was actually really cool. It would sit in the back of the classroom, even run it during class time sometimes in the middle of a lecture. You just build this thing, plop it on a table and park it in the garage somewhere. What's the problem with that? <laughs> Well, for starters, a CNC is loud. How loud? Loud! Really, really loud! Plus, I live in a duplex with my in-laws, which means I've got people directly above and across that wall for the CNC, so I've gotta make sure I'm not making too much noise every time I wanna turn it on. Another huge issue with subtractive manufacturing of a CNC, dust. How much dust, Austin? <laughs> a lot of dust. Lastly, I need an enclosure so that tooling, vacuum, and electronics, and all accessories, including an e-stop, can be conveniently positioned to be useful when things go wrong because, again, unlike a 3D printer, CNC machines don't usually have the luxury of slow, sad failures. And that is it. Those are the requirements. Time to get building.
Thank you, stuff. How you doing? Eh, I'm I'm doing okay. I've had uh, had better days in the shop. Well, I, I I screwed up. Here's where I'm at. Here's what I'm calling. I screwed up on an order of operations on a part of the enclosure build. There is a tool I can get which could salvage the wood that I have. I just I really don't want to waste the wood. Um, it's not the end of the world. It's it's but it's just. Where I'm at is, it's a tool I've already had my eyes on for a while. It's something that I'll have long-term use for, so it's 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 worth it. I just, I was kind of holding off because everything else was kind of pricey, so I just, I didn't think it was worth it. Well, now I just completely screwed up, and I can either throw away the wood, or I can get this tool, and and it's it's a long-term investment. It's, it's not crazy break the budget, but I just wanted to get your two cents on it, kind of see where you're at, what you think. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. That see, that's just kind of wanted to, you know, bounce it off you and. With the base of the enclosure done and built, it was time to actually build the machine. Now, yes, a lot of people go ahead and make their own, but that is a hell of a time commitment and just as expensive. So going off of some advice from a good buddy of mine who has already built three of his own, I chose to go with Carbide 3D's new Shapeoko Pro Double XL. This machine comes in at 175 pounds and has all of the bells and whistles required for what I need to do. With the machine done, the next step on this build is the top and the vacuum arm.
or not. And now it's time to move on to the doors. These doors were the biggest hurdle to get through for the entirety of the project. You see, I didn't want CNC doors that swiveled outward or lifted up. I wanted proper CNC mill doors that slide open. Why? Simply put, because they're proper CNC doors. It allows the operator to get right up against the door without moving the body out of the way, open the door, get in to check on work, and then quickly put it back. Also, they look and feel damn good. One of the problems with having sliding doors though for this machine is that I need them to not only slide but also seal to not allow dust to come out and help reduce the noise that exits the machine. Welcome back to my cave. the moment of truth. <laughs> I think I'm just going to do the most satisfying part of the door right now. Oh.
once I finally got my PhD in how to make a fancy ceiling and sliding door, it was now time to work on finishing out the rest of the CNC machine. I know to most this enclosure seems like overkill and a half, and in many respects, it is. Could I have just made a big ass box in the corner of the garage out of OBS plywood or MDF and gotten away with it? Sure. Did I need the fancy push to open, push to close drawers that cost me a stupid amount of money? No. Crap drawer slides for about a tenth of the cost with some handles would have done just fine. Did I need the doors to work like this so I can enjoy that official CNC door feel? Nope. The crap swivel ones on a door hinge would have worked just fine and probably actually would have reduced the overall size of the machine a fair bit. But I don't like to do anything half-assed. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing right. And I know, like everybody else that's ever built something knows, that when you take the time and the effort to do something and give yourself those luxuries, like the fancy HMI or the push button control or the fancy LEDs, the push to close, push to open drawers, the, the flat face so that way there's no handles grabbing your shorts or your belt loop every time you walk past. All of these little things make it an absolute joy every minute that I get to work with this thing. So was it overkill? Yeah, but that's why it's the ultimate CNC enclosure build. And I enjoyed that. So with this thing done and built, I'm excited to push this machine to see what it can actually do. I'm gonna make some climbing holds and a whole host of new projects that are yet to come. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one.